can't see you, so I'm going to move around. So I'm going to touch on a little bit of a storyline, first of all, and then we can get into um, some specifics. We can talk about any kind of, leave a little room for Q&A if we want to. So about three years ago, we came into this space, Bridge Tower Capital, and we are um, a global company. Our headquarters are Singapore, and we have offices in the U.S., in uh, Zurich, in Zouk, in Japan, opening up, and then in uh, Dubai, and then moving into Latin America as well. So we set up the infrastructure in a way that we could be a part of some of the more progressive jurisdictions. Obviously, Switzerland's very pro-blockchain. A lot of companies and foundations are set up in Zouk, and Singapore's been very good, and then the U.S. gives us some different options as well. And Japan is really coming along. So the global presence was one of the first things we did in setting up the company properly, because what we found was a lot of institutions wanted to understand the company structure, and I think it's overlooked a lot. And so I always spend a few minutes on that, especially with new companies coming into the space. It's expensive. We had a year to get onboarded by Deloitte, and you have to get onboarded in all three different jurisdictions that we were in. But what that's done with, in, with the in institutions is given them confidence that we're compliant. So from day one, we started building infrastructure. And we started at the company level. We started with a team. We heavily invested in attorneys and in Deloitte and set up a proper infrastructure. Because any business has to deal with the SERP to taxes, inversion rules, all the other kinds of nuances that you have as a business. So that's a key. So as I talk about institutions and, you know, we work with a lot of the investment banks, um, from Apollo to SBI to Nomura, um, SoftBank. And a lot of what we built was in talks with these groups, trying to understand how do you get these big investment banks to participate in this ecosystem, because they want to and sometimes the charters don't allow them to, and there's certain restraints that they have to have in order to participate. And then there's certain check marks they want just to have the confidence that you're a company that is doing things the right way. The second thing we did was the partnerships, and we spent a lot of time with partners. We tried to have a reciprocal benefit. So the first year, I invested in about 10 companies, and really it was strategic based on geographic locations so that we could use this offering that we knew we wanted to have, which was we wanted to build a regulated marketplace where we could offer compliant products that were relevant in an institution, investment bank's portfolios. How do we access their money? How do they access you know, the Web 3s? And it's interesting, as you look at the technology that's evolving, you know, Web 3, Web 2, Web 2.5, we spoke at the NAIR conference two weeks ago. And, you know, Web 2.5 was interesting, on-ramping people from Web 2, which is really what today's world is, into Web 3 and explaining, okay, what does that really mean? What is it? The concept of decentralization is great, but it's scary to investment banks and institutions because they're coming in. They don't know KYC. They don't have proof of reserves. So we tapped, you know, Chainlink's been a partner of ours for a good year, and they bring, come in with a technology, smart contracts, that help us prove what we're doing. So we work securitize with stock exchange. So we spent this time building that ecosystem up. So here's what we do. We spent, really that probably took a year. Then we started heavily into staking and we started to build a tech stack. And so we have about 7,500 of our own nodes. They're in Zurich, Switzerland, 100% renewable energy. ESG is important to us, and we stake most of the layer ones. Um, I think we have about 7,000 of our own nodes of ETH, as well as the Web 3.0s. So that platform allowed us to do a lot of things. It allowed us to start to build a tech stack. It allowed us to start to create product from staking, because we believe staking is something that if you're, the underlying premise of everything we all do is a blockchain. So if you're gonna have a blockchain, you're gonna need nodes in some form. So we felt like that was a very stable, ongoing revenue stream, which as you deal with investment banks and institutions, they wanna see revenue. So great ideas are out there, but can you monetize them? Can you commercialize the offering? Is there an opportunity? And the thing that we saw as we started to invest was people had great ideas, 
and they wanted money, then they think money's going to solve the problem. Money's not going to solve your problem. You have to have an offering that generates cash, and the more cash you can generate in a residual way, an annuity, then you can also start to focus on the build. So staking created a nice annuity for us and some cash flow. We don't run debt in our company. Um, don't believe in being leveraged. I've been in business a little too long to understand that when hard times hit, that's a problem. So we keep our balance sheet clean. We sit on some cash and we don't leverage and we don't have debt. So when the storms come like they just came just now, we're safe. That's the third part. When we looked at institutions and investment banks coming in is they want to see, are you going to be around? Are you going to be able to weather the storm? So we don't overbuild infrastructure, product to support, infrastructure, product to support. And then we decided, look, we, it was in a meeting with Marcus. Marcus is my president over in Zurich. We had uh, the global head of Nomura. We had SoftBank, Brevin Howard, and Galaxy Digital in a room in London talking about what is it they want? How do they participate? Other than just investing in companies, which is obviously important, they want product. And so how do you create that product in a compliant way? That was a genesis of a permissioned market that we didn't want just a permission market, that's Web 2. So we said, all right, how do we create this Web 2.5? So through partnerships, you know, we use a phenomenal tech firm. We use Chainlink, we use Securitize. There's a lot of good companies. And we decided, look, if we had a tech stack that had onboarding, you had to go through KYC, KYB to get in, because know your customer, if that doesn't exist, the big investment banks aren't going to look at it, depending on what your offering is and what you're doing. For us, we wanted to offer product. And then we needed proof of funds. They want to know where's the money, who's touching it, what are they doing with it. Chainlink came in with the proof of reserve, and there's actually a booth out there. Um, and I would encourage you, as you look at that, that was key for us. What are you doing with your money? Where is it going? And how are you using it? And then we brought in a custodian, a couple of custodians actually, to hold our wallets, because I don't want to control my funds. I need someone else holding my assets. And then we also wanted um, the customers that came in to have a custodian to hold their wallet. You know, we take for granted as developers, which I'm not a coder, which Marcus will tell you real quick, I know enough to be real dangerous. They wanted, they didn't know. They didn't necessarily know what is Web3, what is a wallet, how do I create it, what's a custodian do? And these are very educated, smart people, but it's new. So we made a seamless process, end to end. We brought in Circle, where we can off ramp fiat to USDC. We're we like that. There's other opportunities with off-ramp, uh, with fiat and different crypto as well. And then we created a secondary marketplace. So now you have an ecosystem where you check the major boxes. So you've got powerhouse companies in there, and that's the fourth piece for me. There's no way in this um, environment, in my opinion, to build something that's truly um, Powerful, different, unique, and compliant, unless you have partners. I don't have what Securitize have. It's a transfer agent, FINRA regulated, SEC approved. Um, they can make sure that the KYC, the listing of securities, which is a whole other topic, can happen. I don't have the tech that Chainlink does, the reputation, the stability, so they can make sure my funds are moving and I'm not controlling them. A custodian takes care of that piece. And then you have fiat. People come in and they don't own crypto. That's an extremely difficult thing if you don't know how to turn fiat into crypto or crypto into fiat. And even if you do know, it's difficult. So we wanted to make that seamless. So the partnerships are really the next piece that as we work with companies that are coming up to the ecosystem, and we're all in the same place, is build as many partnerships as you can. And the value of a partnership to me is how much am I giving versus how much am I asking for. And one of the things we did during this 2021 build was we participated in all the layer ones. I mean, I think we've sponsored most of the layer ones in the last year and a half. We get to speak at them, but we get to meet people. And so it's like, all right, we want to support this ecosystem. What can we give? How can we help? You know, money investing is great, but can we offer resources? Can we provide, you know, Solana? They want to go to Latin America. We have enough presence in Latin America. Great, let's go. 
cash data, you, whomever else wants to get into Switzerland, we can help that happen. So that ecosystem that you build as a company, that's the key for this. So then we looked at the product mix, and there's one product I'll talk about. Um, we, we're not, well, we are a staking company, but we're a product company. So we have an NFT play that's pretty interesting. Um, we have an end-to-end -end solution with staking that's, you know, you got Block Daemon, Figment, the rest of them, powerhouses. Ours is really a white label version, or we will go into the likes of a Lido. Um, you know, and we'll be running an institutional um, grade Lido staking in our marketplace because they want a regulated environment for some of their um, clientele. It doesn't replace everything else they're doing, though. You look at banks, and a bank may say, look, we want to offer staking as an opportunity. And we say, great, we'll run it end to end. We'll white label it, we'll run it through our process, and it's an, instit it's an institutional grade offering, so they trust it. And for us, we've got the infrastructure built, so we can run it and give them a confident, compliant ecosystem. The next one we did, um, I don't know, Marcus, how many times I've heard um, you guys are nuts. You never turn crypto into a security. Well, go back to those partnerships. You go to a securitized, you go to the layer ones, the web threes, the chain links. And then we figured out if we took a staked asset that we own on our own nodes, and we started this with Avalanche, and there'll be more rolling. This one will come out in about four weeks. We use securitized to mint on the AVOX chain in a security. The underlying is a staked asset. Now, we were on the phone with State Street. State Street's got $47 trillion AUC, $9 trillion of their own assets. And when they looked at this, they can only invest in a security. Well, here's an opportunity to come in with a security, with the underlying being a staked crypto. So now we can list that on a regulated exchange for securities. You purchase it. You also now, it's seamless process. You get a custodian. They hold your wallet. And now we have automated the entire process for them. You have a security token after a year. If you want to sell it, sell it. You're earning the rewards in this wallet that's good, paying out in the native token. And so you're now gaining the security as well as access to crypto. And State Street said, I mean, we had the global head of product. He said, this is the only product we could actually touch from a security standpoint. So that's a 12-month build, which my last point because I'm running out of time. It takes a long time. And so if you go back through, I guess for me, building a proper company structure is overlooked. Do it first. Get the partnerships you need. If you want to play in certain regions, know the rules of the regions and understand how they co-mingle because it's not that easy with U.S. foreign investors sell product. You run into a lot of challenges. Build partnerships. Get to know people. But what I like is groups that they want to give to, they want to help. And that's what I loved, honestly, about Chainlink. I mean, Marcus will speak to it. He should be talking about that. I mean, we are knee deep in thoughts, theories, processes, opportunities, as well as actionable plans. And we're constantly trying to produce a result, too. I don't think you can be in a marketplace too long without producing something that's a viable product or offering and getting the visibility. Your partners are your best visibility. I mean, if Chainlink comes out and says, hey, Bridge Tower's doing this great thing, that's more powerful than if I do it. So you start to build that ecosystem. And financially, um, we all want to raise money, which is fine. Have something, though. Have a plan, have a roadmap. Keep some cash, keep some safety net. You know, appetites are different for me. I don't like to be leveraged, and I don't like debt. And we won't take that. So we pay cash, and we own what we have. We can't afford it, we don't build it. So I think the last one is be patient. Patience in this environment is critical. And some of the early decisions we wanted to make in 2021, had we forced them, it would have hurt. So I think having the ability to see the ecosystem, get the partnerships, get a global play, build unique products too. There's a lot of things we can do out here that people are not thinking about. Get creative with the constructs, but do it in a regulated manner and ask people. You know, that's one of the greatest things we've done. I'm out of time, so I think I'm going to get kicked off. All right. So one of the best things we've done is tapping into these groups who are a heck of a lot smarter than we are. 
No, BitGo's here. We use BitGo. I mean, we've been working on a project for nine months to construct one of these products. Securitize, I mean, it takes time. But we leverage, we try to offer help, participate, and then you all win. So our product offerings have five big players in this state security that are all going to benefit. They're all going to make revenue. They're all going to get to use their core stacks or their core offerings. And now you're linked together. And there is a reciprocal benefit for everybody to participate in this thing. So there's a, for what, I guess some opinions, some thoughts. Um, you know, Bridge Tower's fortunate. We've been able to grow. We've been able to do it patiently. And we do things that a lot of people look at us and think we're nuts, which we probably are. But we stick to what we say. And that's the last thing I would say is get a plan, get a roadmap. Get it broad enough, but get a base infrastructure so you have the room to navigate an ecosystem that's going to change and it's going to be difficult. But if you have a core roadmap and you want institutions and investments to work with you, that gives them comfort too. And I would ask for any questions. It's probably good because I probably couldn't answer them because I'm probably about two minutes over. So thank you. Appreciate it.